and it's like 4.30 in the morning. So uh, let's head to the Tacoma Mall. So I'm here um, at the release of the iPhone 5. It's like uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I'm gonna wait for three hours, fun stuff. So uh, hopefully all goes well. I got my iPhone. Life's good. Have a good The box itself is very similar to the previous generation iPhones. Inside the box you'll see the device is actually on top and that is the 16GB Verizon iPhone. After that you've got your user manual and then you've got a missing slot which is where your Thunderbolt cable goes. And as you can see it's very very small, a lot smaller than the 30 pin connector that was in there before. Then you've got your USB to power adapter and the all new Apple EarPods, the updated in-ear headphones from Apple. The new iPhone 5 is sporting a 4-inch display, slightly longer than the 3.5-inch displays found on the previous iPhones. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the iPhone 4 which is on the top and the iPhone 5 which is on the bottom. The iPhone 5 is 18% thinner over the iPhone 4 and 4S. So on the back of the device there are some more noticeable differences. The whole back is predominantly aluminum which Apple likes to call slate. And on the top and bottom you have the standard ceramic glass and you still have that camera on the top left and you have the LED flash. The 3.5mm headphone jack is now on the bottom of the device. Apple's also redesigned the speakers and instead of that 30 pin connector there's now an 8 pin lightning connector. The only difference on the top of the device is that the 3.5mm headphone jack is now on the bottom. So now for the pricing of this new iPhone 5. The 16GB model is $199, the 32GB is $299, and the 64GB is $399. So the dimensions of this new iPhone 5 are 123.8 by 58.6 by 7.6 millimeters. And for its weight, it weighs in at only 112 grams. So this new iPhone 5 is sporting that same retina display, however Apple claims it's more color accurate, but it does have a different aspect ratio as the screen size has changed. Instead of that 3.5 inch retina display, it moved to the 4 inch retina display, and instead of the 960 by 640 resolution, it's now 1136 by 640, which has the same pixel density at around 326 pixels per inch, or PPI, and it is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is classified as widescreen. So for the chipset on this device, it has the new Apple A6, which Apple claims is twice as fast as the previous A5. It's got dual-core CPU and a triple-core GPU. Additionally, an improvement over the 4S, it has a gigabyte of DDR2 RAM, contrary to the 512 megabytes of RAM on the iPhone 4 and 4S. So for the camera, there are some slight improvements. However, some things will remain the same. It's still an 8 megapixel camera with 1080p recording at 30 frames per second, but now you can take photos faster. It's also got a sapphire crystal for clearer images and video. And additionally, it has a panorama feature, so you can take 180 degree photos. So powering this whole iPhone, let's talk about the battery. The battery is a 1440 milliamp battery, and it's got 225 hours of standby time, 8 hours of talk time, and 40 hours of music play. Siri, navigate to the nearest McDonald's. The new iPhone 5 makes great use of the various features brought about in iOS 6, such as the seamless integration with the turn-by-turn -turn navigation and voice assistant Siri. I found the new panorama feature on the iPhone 5 to be quite impressive. It was easy to use, it was intuitive, and the pictures turned out great. Additionally, I can actually see myself using this feature in real life. The thinness and lightness of the new iPhone 5 is absolutely remarkable. At only 7.6 millimeters thin and 112 grams in total weight, this phone is a definition of mobility. With the speed of the new A6 chip and the brilliance of iOS 6, the iPhone 5 delivers an incredible user experience. The aluminum on the back of the iPhone 5 is a significant improvement in terms of durability. In a drop test between the iPhone 5 and a Samsung Galaxy S3, the iPhone 5 actually came out on top. Though the new phone has many new features, it still has that great battery life you'd expect from an iPhone.
With new features like panorama and the ability to shoot photos faster, the camera on this iPhone 5 is quite impressive. 4G LTE is quick. While it's nothing new for Android devices, it's great to finally see that there's an iPhone with 4G LTE capability. The extra screen size on the new iPhone 5 is nice. It gives you more room to deal with, but it doesn't sacrifice comfort. With NFC, or Near Field Communication, Passbook would have had many more capabilities. While a smaller 8-pin lightning connector is nice, it's going to cause some serious incompatibility issues. Since Apple's been using the 30-pin connector for almost a decade, almost all accessories are accustomed to the 30-pin connection. However, you can get a 30-pin to 8-pin adapter through Apple, but that's going to charge you $30, which certainly is not cheap. While Apple Maps has some cool new features, it's rather buggy, and it's still got a long ways to go to catch up with the legendary Google Maps. So I can talk about features and specs all day, but what it really comes down to is user experience. Some iPhone 4S owners may not see the reason to upgrade, as the iPhone 4S has full functionality in iOS 6. If you're interested in getting the new iPhone 5, I'd recommend going to the Apple Store and testing it out for yourself. Additionally, I'd also suggest comparing it with other Android phones and Windows phones on the market so you can truly find what you like or what fits you best. Thanks for watching my hands-on review of the iPhone 5. This is Alex Hager from Tech Taboo, and have a great day.